Welcome back to the workshop. So as you can see, yeah, we've made some pretty good progress. So, so far we've got the power systems in at the top. We've got all the logic systems in the middle there. We've got the relays for the master and the spindle. We've got the AXBB unit wired up. So we've got some of it wired up. We've got power going to it. We haven't tried that yet. Um, and we've got all the step and directions coming out the bottom there. And then in the last video you saw me, it took quite a while, but we got there. Uh, we wired up all the um, step and direction cables to each of the five drivers there. So let's switch it on for the first time, genuinely the first time, and uh, let's see if we can get some lights at least on the AXBB unit. So here we go. Switch on at the wall. Okay, um, we're off at the moment, but we've got 24 volts available to all the ancillaries, including 24 volts going to the main unit. Yes, yeah, so we've got the green light come on just there. So that's great. Right, so I think now we'll boot up the computer and um, I think it'll do a firmware update, so we've been told, so let's uh, see how we get on. Okay, so all I've done so far is just installed the software. Uh, it looks like we've got a shortcut to the, the main software there, the UCCNC, and also to a UCCNC plasma. Well, I don't have a plasma, so I won't use that, and I've no idea what that is. Maybe that's something to do with the graphics card. Anyway, that's the one we want. Okay, now I've got all that wiring sorted out, we'll move on to the PC. So, quick word of caution if you're using uh, the UCCNC software. Uh, you need um, a certain level of OpenGL, so that's the graphics language. So it needs to be at least version 1.3 and above. And some of the built-in graphics cards that you get, especially on some of the smaller machines, uh, won't go up that far, they just won't support that level of OpenGL, and uh, you'll be stuck. So a couple of options are, that's if you're running Windows 10, a couple of options are, apparently you can wind back to Windows 7, um, and you, you can upgrade it to the, the version 1.3, so I've been told. Um, I guess I'd worry about whether Windows 7 was no longer supported. I know you're offline mostly, um, but that, apparently that is an option. Um, I'm going with Windows 10, so what I went for was I had to look on eBay for a graphics card that would support OpenGL 1.3 and above. And I found this one for about £20. So it's nothing that fancy, but it goes up to about version uh, 3, maybe 4 for OpenGL, so it's plenty good enough. Um, it's only got 512 megabytes of RAM, and I think it's DDR2, so it's a little bit old, but you know, for £20, uh, that now runs and the software fires up. So before that, it wouldn't work with the built-in graphics, so that sorted that out. So you've got a couple of options. You can either put a cheap graphics card in that supports OpenGL at least to version 1.3 or higher, um, or you can wind back to Windows 7, and um, some of the onboard graphics, you may then be able to work up to that version. Okay, before we go too much further, we'll just mention a few things um, in case you didn't know that. So if you're wiring it direct, so between the computer and direct into the unit, you need what's called a crossover cable like this, where at least two of the pairs of wires, I forget which pair, but two of them are crossed over. If you go from the computer into a router and then from the router to that, then you can just go through the straight through. So if you just buy a regular cable, you might only have a the straight through one, so just watch out for that. Uh, and then the second thing we need to do is actually set up the network. And we've got all the masks and everything we need to put in for the IP address. Uh, yeah, so I'm just going to follow the instructions in here. Oh, it's like that, isn't it? I'm going to get this right out of order, aren't I? I'm going to follow the instructions, get the network set up, got all the protocols here, everything you need to follow, and the address was back here somewhere. Yeah, I'll just work my way through this through this bit as well, and then I think that, sh that should get us there. Uh, so on there. And then we'll be ready to go. So I'll do all that, get it connected, and then we'll bring you back. I think it says we can check the configuration. And Ten, 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 two, four, five, two, five, two, zero. Happy with that? Right. So the next bit within the UCCNC directory, there's something called this utility. So we need to go into there next. 
Ah. Okay. Needs a framework update. Oh, happy days. That's probably because this is a fresh install of Windows. Okay, so I just swapped the cable back on the internet, downloaded the .NET file, then swapped the cable back again, and hopefully this time, so we've got the AXBB unit on, and we'll run the utility. Okay, and then scan. We're there. So it's found it. Okay, so next, we'll load up the software. Right. Now, when I was installing this, I did just run through all the different buttons at the top just to make sure um, it was going to work and it was going to do... Oh, firmware update. Okay. Oh, yeah. I've been told it would do that. So that's fine. Okay, that's good. Uh, yeah, so I've just ran through all the buttons at the top just to make sure I could see something. But basically, this is not going to be a tutorial. This is going to be uh, me seeing this really for the first time. Okay. All right, well, we're in. So... Um Let's have a look around. Actually, before we do that, um, one of the lights wasn't on on the unit, which said link. So let's see if that is now linked. I don't know if you can see that. But the blue light just there is on. Oh yeah, and you can see the internet connection there, or the ethernet connection. Okay, right, let's go and have a look around. Okay, so what have we got? So, looks like we've got the area, I guess, where the G code file will appear, well, the actual uh, toolpath, sorry. That looks like the G code area there. Uh, these, I guess, are to manipulate the image, so you spin it round. Okay, that's fine. Do these do anything? Uh, maybe, maybe not yet. Uh, okay, so you can switch between machine coordinates and your work coordinates there. Zero all the axes, that's fine. Uh, I guess that's zero each individually for the XYZ and ABC. Home all the axes, okay, fairly straightforward. Uh, the feed rate override and the speed override, okay, with percentages. I guess that's spindle start stop, but uh, of course I've got that on my front panel. It, these are the uh, local coordinate systems, so I'm in G54. I, you know, I don't, I'm not doing anything very complicated, I tend to just stick in that one. So uh, the idea of that is, once your machine is zeroed, uh, you go over to where your edgy workpiece is, and uh, then you would zero there, and then that is your G54 local axis, or at least that's one way to use it. And you can have a number of these around the board, uh, so you can have different jigs and fixtures, but I am tend to be do, do one-offs, so uh, I just tend to use that one. Um, I don't know what that is, maybe that's just, is that probing touch-off? Not sure. Uh, JSP, don't know. Maybe these are some plasma ones. Loading the file, okay, they're straightforward. MDI, so that'll be your direct input, so you can actually type commands direct. Uh, what else we've got? Run from here. Okay, so I'm coming from Mac 3, so it had something very similar. If you had a, a problem, a crash, or something like that, uh, you could note down the line you'd got to, scroll down to that line, do run from here. So I'm guessing it's kind of the same thing to pick up where you've left off, which saves you um, machining again. Uh, all the areas you've already done, particularly on long jobs. That's probably that. Uh, dwell tool. Okay, I don't tend to change tools or such like that. I just manually swap them over. Uh, it's probably to do with the tool changing. Okay. Uh, override limits. Might be when you hit the limits and you can uh, back off, I'm guessing. Okay, and then the usual cycle start. I mean, go through the, the G code in single lines. Okay. Feed, hold, and stop. So. Uh, cycle start. The feed hold can be useful. Um, it tends to stop at the next sort of nearest command. It doesn't stop instantly. Obviously, cycle stop would do that. And then reset will. Uh, if I turn the main machine on, that I guess would uh, then all go live. So we won't do that yet. That flashing would get a bit annoying, couldn't it? Okay, let's have a look and see what we've got along the top. Okay, so that's run. Um, we've got toolpath. Okay, so that's a zoomed in version. That'd be quite nice once you're actually running. Uh, you just load your files out, okay, fine. Offsets, I uh, don't tend to use those very much, okay, but that all makes sense. Okay, and we've got the, uh, how many got there? Six there, all the different ones. I'll say um, I have fairly basic needs, so I just stick with G54 normally. That's fine, what else we've got then? Tools. Yeah, I just change tools manually and then um, I set the heights manually, but um, 
Wow, you got a lot of tools there, up to 96. Uh, okay, that's good. Uh, are these Digitize and Pro related to that option? Okay. Right, okay, I guess that makes sense to have that in there. Uh, all right, well, while we're on the Pro one, okay. Now, I know I've seen online um, there have, other people have written their own versions of these, um, for different configurations. Uh, yeah, all that's yet to come. Let's just get this thing, uh, the basics working. Okay, so we can probe down. Oh, oh, that's quite nice. Probe along an angled si uh, surface and see what the angle is. Okay, it kind of makes sense. So I'll have a play with that uh, once we're all up and running. Digitize, digitize. Okay, it's interesting. Maybe some kind of scanning of a surface with a, 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 the correct probe. Can't say I really do that, but okay, it's there if you need to. Uh, configuration. Okay, here's what we really need. So uh, I've obviously come from Mac 3, so a lot of this is very familiar. So we've got to set all our step and direction pins. Now those will match um, what, oh, I don't know if I can open the door with the camera in the way. Oh, just about, yeah. So those will match what I've set down there. So I've set those to, they start at 09, 010, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, and 16. So those are all my step and directions uh, on, yeah, on port one. I guess I'll need to run through each of those. So that's for, okay, this is opened up a bit. So this is for the X direction, or the X axis, sorry. Whether it's active, low, or high. Okay, that's fine. Uh, okay, steps, all this. Okay, so this is all, yeah, usual stuff we need to fill in. That's fine. And we've got one for X, we've got Y, we've got Z. Now I need A to be slaved. Uh, Maybe I'll do that somewhere else, do I? Because it's kind of giving you the option that this might be a rotary axis, which is not. Um, and I'll have a B slaved as well, so where are they? Where's, oh, here we are, slave. Okay, so I'll slave X to A. And the Z axis will be slaved to B. Okay, that makes sense. Oh, what else have gotten in here? Backlash don't tend to use that. Soft limits don't tend to use those either. But yeah, it's all fairly straightforward. Uh, so we'll do the A and B. I won't be using C. Uh, spindle, if it's PWM control. Um, I haven't got any of that. I, I do all that manually. Um, I know a lot of people like to use, um, get, get the software to start, stop spindle, run it at the correct speed and so on. Uh, I tend to like to just use the button and set it myself. That's just personal preference. Uh, okay, so I don't really need to go in into any of that. Uh, we've got encoder options down here, that's fine. Uh, do you want the relay to run all the, I guess the three and four, oh no, they're the start and stops, aren't they? So again, it's configuring all the spindle, okay. And then M7 and 8 are often flood missed. I think there's nine, which is combination. Okay, so a bit of a setting up. I don't have any of those either, so that's, that's good. Auxiliary encoder. Uh, now is that for the steppers or is that for the spindle? I don't know. Well, I don't have one, so I don't need that yet, but should I need it? There it is. Right, configuration, axis. So what else got then? Input, output. Okay, so where's the e-stop? Um, so which pins that in? I can't remember, but I do know where it is on the unit. Um, probes I haven't got set up yet. Oh, I can have two of those. Okay, fine. Charge port will be um, on zero. That's fine. Uh, that reminds me, I've still got the relay wired directly down to ground. I haven't got it into the charge pump uh, port yet for safety. So we'll get this running, get it all working, and then get it um, sort of the safety system running under the charge pump. Basically, what that will mean is if the computer loses contact while it's running a job with the, the, the AXBB unit, uh, the charge pump will stop and it will shut the system down rather than it carrying on going and doing something random. But uh, we'll come to that in due course. Uh, what else we've got? Analog input, free rate override. Uh, not sure what they're doing. MPG. I do have one of those. Uh, I might play around. I, I didn't get on with it to be honest. Um, I much prefer using the keyboard. Um, so okay, well maybe we'll come back to that. Uh, torch height control for uh, plasma. I don't have any of that but that's there. Okay. Input output trigger. These I'm guessing are uh, limits and homes. Okay, input triggers there, output. Okay, uh, I can't think of any outputs I might be using. Hotkeys, okay. 
So we can have some shortcut hotkeys to each of those. Okay, we've got general settings, uh, exact stop constant. Uh, I've never used exact stop. Um, in principle, it's um, very accurate, but if you were cutting, um, say you're cutting a little square like that, it will go right into the corner and then stop and then carry on again. So it can be a little bit juddery if you do that. Um, I don't think the accuracy you gained for a hobbyist is really worth it. It's better, be, better to be a bit smooth. I think and just go for that one. Stop at angle, okay, look ahead, do with the, the code, how far it looks ahead. Uh, what else we got? So enable soft limits. I don't tend to use those, but a lot of people do, so that's there. If you don't know what the G code is, just ignore it. Uh, maybe I'll put a warning up, I don't know. I'll have a look. I might go for warning. Uh, Debouncing, yeah, that can be a problem if you've got problems with your homes limits. Uh, hopefully I can get those working nicely without having to do that. That's a little bit of a fudge, I think. Well, let's see how we get on. Kernel frequency, uh, 100k, wow, 400k, 200. I uh, can't remember what Mac 3 was running at, I don't think it was that high. Maybe the beauty of the Ethernet system. We'll leave that at default for now. Okay, four digit on DRO, okay, just personal preference thing. Uh, I don't need any tool changes through M6, so I don't need to run any macros, all done manually. I uh, don't think we need any of that. Oh, then, okay, then you can change the order that home's in. Um, I don't tend to home all, I sort of, <laughs> you might have got a bit of a thread here, sort of like do things myself. So I tend to home each axis in turn, make sure there's no issues with it. I don't just sort of home all and then let it get on with it. But uh, okay, nice to know we got that, should I need to do it? All right, um, what else we got? Appearance, okay. Color schemes for different things, just personal preferences in it. I think I'll leave that for now. It's probably reasonably optimized for most people, I guess. And profiles, I guess, is okay. So we'll make all the settings and then we'll store it in a profile and then we don't lose it. I'll probably make a backup of that somewhere once I'm happy with it. Uh, okay, looks like I can import an XML file. I'll just start again. It's, I, I'm not going to bother with that. It will, it will force me to get used to all the settings and everything. Uh, it looks like we've come to the end. Have we? Oh no, sorry. Comes in there. Diagnostics, what we got. Okay, here's all the ports. Okay, so it can see. Uh, I don't know, does that make sense? I'm not sure. That's not quite what I was expecting, I think. Okay, we'll come back to that. A lot of it's not configured. I still don't have um, all my homes and limits, so none of that's going to work. Uh, idle, okay, and it's in reset mode. Okay, I'm sure once I get more of it wired up and then start testing each of these uh, I can check they're working. Okay, what we've got under cam? Oh, oh cam as in cam, right. Uh, you can you can import a DXF and okay a little bit built in cam, I didn't know that. I guess that could be handy if you're drawing a little square or something. Um, or you want something nice and simple rather than go back to the main PC and do it there. Okay, you can create some G code out of some DXF file. Okay, wonder how good that is and how capable that post processor is for that. Okay, well it's, it's there. I'm not sure I'll use it, but interesting. And help. Okay, I don't know if you can read that. That's, uh, they're all the G codes, okay. Okay, so the next thing I'm going to do, I'll just go into configuration, we'll set up all the ports and pins for the step and direction so it knows which of those are, which one's which basically. Uh, we'll set up the slaving, so I've got X, Y, Z, then the A will be slaved to X, so I've got two X ones, I've got a dual axis on there. And unusually on my machine I've got two on my Z as well, so my B will be slaved to the Z as well. Uh, then we'll set all this, uh, the steps per millimeter so um, I imagine it's going to be 320 again from memory but we'll have a look at that set all the velocities get all that tuned in um, and then hopefully we'll get some motion at least out of this now we won't have any homes limits set up yet uh, but one step at a time so I'll go and do that uh, I won't let you watch me do that that's just going to be a bit tedious there's plenty of tutorials online about how to do that and then once we've got that working we'll bring you back and um, see if we can get some movement Okay, a few minutes later we've got it set up, or well, the basics anyway, so we've got the x-axis is on pin 9 and 10 and then on my machine, because I then slaved that to A, uh, they're the next ones, 11 and 12, again both on port 1, and then we go to the y-axis, 13 and 14 on port 1, and then the z-axis, 15 and 16 on port 1. 
Uh, now we've also got the B axis, which is the slave to the Z there, which is also on 1516, because if you remember, I'm sharing the same step and direction pins for the two motors that drive the Z up and down. So that's the kind of basics. If we go back to X again, so you'll see down here, uh, I've got my steps per 320. Um, I need to just double check that's a long time since I've set up the machine quite a few years ago, but that number rings a bell. Um, if that's not right, I'll do the calculations properly, but that's just to get us going. Um, we don't really mind too much at the moment. Just want to make sure we get some movement. And then just to make sure it doesn't, oh, I'll show you why I've got these set extremely low in a minute, um, but they're very, very low. I just want to make sure I've got movement in the right directions and it's doing what I think it's going to do. So this is very slow and very small acceleration, uh, and I've not touched these. And in terms of slave, I've slaved it to A, which is the second x-axis up here. So that's the first one set. Uh, homing, uh, we're going to home negative, so I've left that one alone. Then we go to y-axis. Again, same steps per, same very slow uh, rates, just in case anything unusual happens. Uh, nothing else set, there's no slaves on y. Then we go to z. Um, this time we've got to home in the positive direction because we, we home towards the top of the machine, so I'll tick that box. And then again, uh, steps per 320 and everything else is uh, very, very slow. Um, now this time I haven't actually, I was thinking about this, I haven't set a slave. And I'll show you why in a minute. So that one's set to 1516. If we go to you know, the, what I guess could be termed the slave, but the B for that one, the second Z axis, you notice that's also 1516, also homes in the positive direction, um, and it's got it, the same settings there. And that's because I think it's better to do it this way around. Um, now I might get stuck when it homes both those together, so actually that's probably is going to catch me out, isn't it? But just for moving it around, I think that's a better option, because it's just going to put the same inputs to each of those, and then when I... Oh no, I think I'm going to be okay. So that, as far as the computer's concerned, it doesn't know about the B axis. It will put step and direction out to 15, whether it's moving, homing, whatever. And that will also go into the, the second Z axis, the B as well. So it's kind of a ghost one in the background and it will just do exactly what the original Z one does. Uh, so I think that's probably a better way to do it rather than try and tell it it's a, a slave and it get a little bit confused. So that's what we've got set up. Um, I'll show you the machine and why I'm being a little bit careful about some of these settings down here. So annoyingly, this is where we got to uh, when the PC stopped working uh, quite a few weeks ago. So it's kind of in that corner, um, which means uh, oh, I tried to get the I tried to loosen the collet and get the bit out, but there's just nowhere near enough space. Now, in theory, I can move the spindle up inside the housing by loosening these two bolts, which I've done. But there's another two up here, and they're just hidden, um, so it's not quite low enough for me to get to those. So basically, I'm kind of stuck. I could probably move this out of the way, but I did take a long time uh, getting it dialed in so it was square and run true to the machine. So uh, I think what I'm going to do is I'll just tighten everything back up again. I'll push the, the bit up into the spindle as best I can, and then we'll see if we can get the Z direction working. And as soon as we're clear of the part, then we're home free and we can experiment with the X and Y and make sure they work. So let me sort that out, and then we'll go back to the machine and see if we can lift this thing up. I guess there's only one thing left to do, and that's switch on. Now I um, I wired up the e-stop, so oh, I didn't show you that one, did I? Uh, where's that configure input? Uh, no, here we are. Uh, e-stop on pin five on port two. I've got that going in at the top there, the top two terminals, and they go round. They come off the relay, so when the relay is energised, it makes the contact, and that. Uh, comes out of e-stop if you like on there. If you hit e-stop, contact breaks, it knows you're in the software e-stop but it also does all the hardware e-stop so it'll cut off the power and everything else. So I think we're about as ready as we're going to ever be. Blue light's on, it's flashing away. Let's go to here. Now I noticed there was some, uh, where was that, hotkeys. I guess these are ASCII versions, I mean that's the letter A perhaps. Um, I need to download I think a second set of instructions for what 156 does. So I'm hoping these are pre-configured to at least be the uh, cursor keys for the direction. Page up, page down for the to move the spindle up and down. Uh, I can't see it for looking single uh, jog rate and jog rate in terms of single stepping. Um, yeah, where's that on there? Am I not seeing that? 
Okay, anyway, let's switch on and see what happens. Okay, power on. Uh, reset. Okay. If you remember earlier, I was trying to find where the little jog increments were and all that sort of settings. I couldn't see it. Well, now we're out of reset and we're you know we're live, we're ready to go. Uh, yeah, I've hovered over these arrows and this appeared. So we're on. I'll make it very very small and continuous. Uh, oh, I can you? Okay, well, let's try it from here then. So we'll try going up. It's doing something. Let's go a bit more. That's 0.01 of a step this time. It's doing something. Let's have a look at the steppers. We'll bring it up, which is perfect. So if we go let's go a little bit, let's go point one. It's definitely going up, isn't it? Alright, let's go up in ones. keep doing this I'll bring it up and then we'll see if the keys work because I don't know how the hotkeys are configured and uh, what's connected hopefully it's page up and page down but let's get it clear first before we start experimenting all right well, I was getting bored of that it's taking too long so I've just upped the uh, maximum velocity to 100 and then put the feed rate up to 100% and uh, it's moving a bit quicker now so let's just go up can easily move the bit out now and uh, make sure it doesn't hit the vice and then we'll get the X and Y's tuned in. Uh, put the velocity, let's go up to 200. Right, I've had to play around and I've put it up to 2000 millimetres per minute and acceleration 300 millimetres per second squared and uh, that's, that's moving a lot better. be sure but that sounds smoother that sounds smoother than when it was running a Mac 3 I don't know if that's the what was it running 100 kilohertz 200 kilohertz whatever it was is that that I just seems it, it sounds different and if the pulse train is just smoother nicer I don't know that just Alright, let's bump that up a bit. Let's drive it faster. Ah, that started to sound. I think the uh, it's quite cool in here at the moment. Uh, I think I can hear the balls, sort of the grease uh, going around, recirculating around there. Four thousand. Oh wow. I don't think I've had it running that fast. Go on and how fast can we go before it stalls? Five thousand. I'm not gonna run it like this, but here we go, five thousand. Oop. Now I don't mind experimenting with this axis because it's a single motor so if it stalls it will just stop. Um, Alright, 5000. And these are only 5mm pitch ball screws. Um, yeah, I think for a machine like this it's recommended to have 10. I've had these years and years and years so you know, that's why I went with because I built it back then but 
That would go very fast indeed. Uh... Well, who'd have thought it? That is a lot quicker and smoother. Right, so go on then, what should we... <laughs> what should we go with? Let's go 6,000. I'll pep up the acceleration a little bit as well, just in, to make sure it slows down in time. Uh, you have to save. Okay, and then... I think it's fair to say I've never had it running that quick. Uh, Alright, let's go one more. 8,000 millimetres per minute. Oh. Not sure my axis is long enough. Oh, uh, I think that was the limit there somewhere. Well, that's 8,000. Plenty quick enough. I'll back that back down and uh, we'll move on to the x-axis. I've got the x-axis. Again, we've got the uh, speed very low because I've got two. I don't want anything to bind up or go a bit funny. So we've got the x and the a which it's slave to, both got the same, oh, same settings, yes. Alright, I like this pop out of the side, it's nice, you go to there and then you, you don't have to mess around at the top of the menu, it just pops out, you use it and it's gone. Very neat. Uh, right, what are we doing, let's do step uh, this way. That's stepping. So that's X plus, it's going the other way. So we need to make that go the other direction. The direction pin there, we'll spin that the other way. And uh, so we don't have any nasty accidents, we'll put that one the other way as well. Both the same. Yep. So it should reverse the logic on the direction. Save. Let's give it some speed. So uh, let's go. 2000 and I'll put 300. Now that might sound a little bit crunchy and uneven and it's because, so when I got these ball screws this one was very bent and the other one over there was a little bit bent. This is many many years ago. Um, and I had this one sent away to be straightened. It cost about £40. I'm so glad I did because it runs beautifully smooth. The other one I decided to save some money and it's still slightly bent and basically what's happened over the years it's kind of worn itself in and I probably should change it or at least send it away to be straightened and put some new ball nuts on it. I mean it kind of works, it's just you do hear this kind of intermittent sound as it's going round. You know. I regret not paying and just another 40 quid and getting that one straightened as well but you know hey ho uh, that's what I did at the time uh, anyway uh, back to the software um, yeah it well it's no <laughs> it just worked um, I put the ports and pins in uh, as you can see these are on 9 and 10 for this one and then I went all the way through those are configured to how I got them wired into the unit itself we got the e-stop wired up as well where do we put that one on to pin uh, here it is, sorry, pin 5, that's on port 2, again it's in the instructions. Uh, it likes to have 24 volts fed to it when it's normally happy and okay, so it's active when it's low, so we have to check that button there. Uh, I think that's kind of all I've had to do so far. Yeah, so what I'm already, yeah, I'm running 100 kilohertz. Uh, that does sound sweet. Okay. Uh, and then uh, just play around with these. I, I'll double check the 320, I'll uh, just measure the distance. I'm pretty sure that's right with these ball screws and motors and the uh, micro stepping that I've got. Uh, if not, I'll quickly change that and then I uh, play a bit more around with these um, just till I'm, I'm happy I've got the sweet spot there. But yeah, it, um, yeah, uh, just set it all up, it worked. Brilliant. Well, I'm kind of surprised uh, but uh, happy at the same time. So there we go. Really happy so far. Really nice interface. Um, I mean, if you come from Mac or any other system, it's all pretty standard stuff. It all makes a lot of sense. 
as you can see you can get it going with just the basics there and then go from there yeah brilliant uh, before i get too carried away obviously i could use this i could just machine those parts out and um you know i, could, uh, I don't know if i can use soft limits because i haven't got the homes anyway I will get tempted to use it unless I get these sorted out. Now they're currently just, the wires are just dangling down here. They're, they're too short now to go into the new machine because on this one they need to go straight into the cabinet before they went into a little intermediate box. So I need to get my two homes working. I've got a home on the Y axis just here. I've got a limit on the other side. Home on the Z axis and I've got limits at the X axis at the other end. They're all proximity. So really, before I start using it, I should get those wired in. So. Uh, I think we'll have a look at those next. And when I say next, unfortunately, that'll have to be in the next video because this one's getting quite long. Okay, well, I hope you enjoyed the video. Hope you enjoyed the little tour around the UC CNC software as well. Uh, obviously, it's my first time using it, so if you've had any good experiences, let me know in the comments. Um, I think all that remains to be said is thank you very much for watching and see you next time. Mm -hmm.